Captain CA here and welcome to Flats Class YouTube. Just got off the phone with Captain Danny Allen out of Cedar Key. And him and I have planned to make an effort to fish together for Flats Class TV uh, tomorrow. Here's the problem. all that wind that's what we're going to deal with northwest to north as the front comes through so it's going to start off wet dark and then eventually clear off and go to the north at about 15 to 20. so he said bring some lures that would accommodate that type of weather what could i possibly bring that will show up in that mess especially since it's already blowing here and he's north of me he said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head a little north of Cedar Key and try to tuck up against the bank. He goes, so it might not get as nasty there, but you better bring something that has a little shake, rattle, and roll. So that's what I'm going to put together up here on the boat. I'm going to show it to you next. Well, it would seem as if I have a little bass man in me because getting ready for this trip, you can see all the tackle I've got displayed on the deck of the professional here. Uh, it looks like I've put together five spinning rod outfits and three casting rod outfits. So eight total outfits for this particular episode of Flats Class with Captain Danny Allen. Now, when I call it the shake, rattle, and roll, there is a theme to this show. And I've gone ahead and pre-rigged most of these rods all up. Uh, one thing that makes it, I'm gonna say challenging when you're trying to shoot television, is constantly having to retie and adapt in the boat. I'd rather have everything done ahead of time and then uh, if I need to adapt, maybe I only have to change one rod. But uh, right now, the plan is to go with what I have here. And I've got a little bit of a background for fishing up there. If you guys remember, I did a, a Redfish Bonanza show up there probably three seasons ago. At least three seasons, maybe four seasons ago with Captain Brandon Branch. So uh, fishing with Danny is going to be a little bit different. We're going to put a little bit different twist on what we're trying to accomplish up there. And obviously the weather is gonna be a major factor in this one where it was no factor when I was up there a couple of years ago. So let me show you what I got. So when I say shake, rattle and roll, obviously I'm talking about having lures that have big profiles, lures that have plenty of flash, lures that I can rely on to make long distance casts and throw tons of vibration into the water. Now, I'm gonna break these down for you uh, right now, and we'll talk about them one by one, what I'm, what I'm thinking, what goes through my mind. All right, let me show you the first thing that I, I picked up. The first thing I picked up was the Terramar Double X. This is the seven foot heavy. Uh, I put a five inch Hercules minnows on here with a TRD underspins. Uh, why did I do that? Well, it's the weather. When you've got blistering winds, which we're supposed to have 15 to 20 first thing in the morning, and you've got those dark skies, so you've got turbid water conditions. Even if we had clear water conditions, I'd probably still throw this setup. Um, I think it'll add a big profile with plenty of flash and plenty of thump. And if fish are in some of those little deeper runs, I'm going to be able to access them with this. And it's a little heavier rod setup, so uh, it's going to be perfect for some of those bigger redfish. And believe it or not, north of Cedar Key, you can actually catch snook. That's setup number one of the shake, rattle, and roll. This is what I'm gonna choose for setup number two. 
This is uh, a medium heavy rod. This is on the PX, if you will, the Terramar PX. Um, it's got a little bit more tip where I can throw uh, something a little, uh, you know, lighter like this. Here's a, a spinner bait arm with a beer run diesel. This is on a quarter ounce uh, redfish eye. Um, this is a 4,000 size reel. So on this medium heavy setup, it's another type of bait, especially in the places where the water is a little shallower. I'll be able to roll it over rock and you'll have that thumping of that blade, that shake, rattle, and roll. And I'll just be rolling it over there. And in the past, this has served me well in those conditions and in that zone. So I feel relatively confident about it. So confident, I may have rigged two of these, I'm not sure. Um, but this and the first rod I showed you, probably the two go-to outfits. Now, let me show you outfit number three, because I've got eight of them. All right. Outfit number three is basically what outfit number one was, just a smaller version. This is the four inch Hercules minnow. Went with a little bit of a color change. Like I said, I got a little bass man in me. I want to have different sizes, different colors, and I don't want to have to rig throughout the day. Again, 4000 Twin Power XD, medium heavy action, seven foot rod. And I put the underspin on this as well because I'm looking for every advantage that I can get in these type of conditions. So number three, another Herc minnow with an underspin. Then I wanted to put on this, this is more of a medium action Terramar double X. Uh, I've got it on a 3000 um, Twin Power XD. And I wanted a, that new top water. This is uh, the the mullet skin series top water, but it's in the top dog junior size. And if you look real close, you'll see that I mashed all the barbs down on the trebs. I have found that that's never cost me a fish. It's easier to get the fish off once I catch them in the net. Um, and on days like this, I know you're thinking, oh, you're not supposed to throw top water on windy days. But there's going to be opportunities where he'll get me behind points and places like that where we can throw something like this in a few slicks. And I'll bet it will be received by that one or two trout that are laying in those zones. Hey, we are talking mid-March. There's a big opportunity to catch some big trout. So figured I'd rig one of these up. And then my last spinning outfit. hard to go against a spoon. This is the Aqua Dream. This is the Chartreuse. I also like the pink or the black one up in that area. But I put this on a medium action Terramar Double X. Uh, this is on my Sustain 3000. It's a real light setup. Again, if I need to make distance casts away from the boat, this is going to allow me to do that. And it's got, it's a little bit more subtle than the previous five setups that I had. So it's still got that flash, little bit of thump, not as much. But if I have to drop down in just bodacious presentations, probably gonna drop down to that. Now, let me show you what I've got on my casting rods. Casting rods, because naturally, Danny's gonna probably be using some of those spinners. Casting rods, I went back, I just put a different color four inch Herc minnow on this. Again, underspin on the bait. This is on a Zodius, this is a medium heavy, I believe this is the six foot 10 uh, Zodius rod. I like these rods, they're very crisp, great hook setting power and you need it because that's a pretty robust hook that I have on this, uh, on this minnow, if you can see that there. In fact, I'll just pull it off so you can see it. That is a big hook. It's a big hook, but this is a great little presentation. Gets me a lot of looks from redfish, snook, and big trout. So this is something that I will probably throw, and I can drive this into the wind. It's, it's compact, it's dense, it's heavy, and I can drive it straight through the wind to the bank. So probably use this one a little bit for myself. Uh, again, I was a little bit redundant. This is a six foot nine. Everyone has seen that video I did where I told you I love the Terramar uh, double X in the six foot nine. Here's the, the setup for that model number. Um, this has turned out to be one of my favorite rods. In fact, I brought two. <laughs> um, 20 pound power pro. I put this one on a DC cause I'm throwing the, 
the lure that's a little heavier than the lure weight says for the rod. But again, top water, good play if I can get up into some slicks. And then lastly, something that I have a lot of faith with for trout, and that's the MR17. Um, we did a show this year with uh, Bob Puccinelli and throwing this lure, and it it was fantastic. I mean, we threw the Paul Brown, we threw this one, uh, and had big days in February. So I'm hoping that theme can continue with this setup. Let's talk about one more thing, and that is I need more of you subscribing to this channel so I can teach you guys more about inshore fishing. And the only way that works is if I have more of you in my virtual classroom. So without any hesitation at all, go ahead and smash the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, tell your fishing buddies, and let me help you guys put more fish next to your skiff the next time you're out or your kayak or your center console or what have you. All right, I've got to get some rain gear packed and a few more odds and ends. I'll be fishing tomorrow.